By subscribing and liking the content, give us a like to continue delivering the most important information. Stay safe by being vigilant. With that out of the way, let's delve into today's news. Cybersecurity researchers have recently identified a new Apple macOS backdoor named Spectral Blur, which appears to have connections to a malware family associated with North Korean threat actors. This discovery highlights the increasing focus of North Korean hackers on macOS systems, particularly those involved in the cryptocurrency and blockchain sectors. Key characteristics of Spectral Blur Functionality Spectral Blur is deemed a moderately capable backdoor. It can perform various tasks such as uploading and downloading files, running a shell, updating its configuration, deleting files, and entering hibernate or sleep modes. These actions are executed based on commands from its command and control C &C, server. Encryption. Communication with the CNC server is conducted over sockets encrypted with RC4, enhancing its stealth and security. Analysis evasion. The backdoor is designed to hinder analysis and evade detection. It employs a pseudo terminal to execute shell commands received from the CNC and can erase files after overwriting their content with zeros. Link to Candy Corn Malware Spectral Blur shares notable similarities with Candy Corn, also known as Sock Racket, another malware attributed to the North Korean hacking group Lazarus. Candy Corn is an advanced implant used for monitoring and interacting with compromised machines, particularly targeting blockchain engineers at a cryptocurrency exchange. Researchers believe that Spectral Blur and Candy Corn were developed by different developers but based on similar requirements, which explains their functional similarities. Overall threat landscape. The emergence of Spectral Blur is part of a broader trend of increasing MacOS malware threats. In 2023, there were 21 new malware families targeting MacOS systems identified, a significant increase from the previous year. North Korean threat actors, particularly the Lazarus Group, have been active since at least 2009 and are continually evolving their techniques and targets, with a growing emphasis on MacOS systems. This discovery underlines the need for heightened vigilance and robust security measures, especially for individuals and organizations within the cryptocurrency and blockchain industries that are increasingly being targeted by sophisticated cyber threats like Spectral Blur. Now, let's shift our focus to another cyber matter. Margaret A. Vestager, the European Union's antitrust chief, is set to meet with the CEOs of major technology companies like Apple, Alphabet, Broadcom, and NVIDIA during her visit to the United States next week. These meetings, scheduled to take place in San Francisco and Palo Alto, will primarily focus on European digital regulation and competition policy. Vestige's discussions are especially significant given her recent return to her role after an unsuccessful bid to lead the European Investment Bank. Antitrust experts anticipate that she might adopt a tougher stance in both merger and competition investigations, which could present new challenges for the companies under scrutiny. The lineup for these meetings includes high profile executives like Apple CEO Tim Cook, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai, and its chief legal officer Kent Walker, Broadcom CEO Hock Tan, and Nvidia CEO Jensen Huang. Additionally, Vestager is expected to engage with OpenEye's Chief Technology Officer Mira Marathi and its Chief Strategy Officer Jason Kwan. One of the critical discussions will likely involve Apple's offer to allow rivals access to its tap-and-go mobile payment systems. This move is part of an effort to settle an ongoing investigation by Vestager and potentially avoid a substantial fine. The European Commission is expected to seek feedback from rivals and customers on this matter later this month, although a final decision has not yet been reached. These meetings are happening at a time when digital regulation and the role of big tech companies are under intense scrutiny globally, reflecting the growing significance of technology in the global market. Finally, as we delve into our last news segment for the moment, let's explore. Telegram Messenger has expressed uncertainty regarding the reasons behind the dropping of fines imposed on it and other major technology companies by Russian courts. The fines, which were levied for reasons not specified in the reports, were apparently settled as the companies are no longer listed as debtors in the state bailiffs database. A Telegram spokesperson noted that the company lacks assets, offices, or employees in Russia, which might have contributed to the difficulty in enforcing these fines. This situation comes amid ongoing tensions between Russia and foreign technology companies over issues such as content moderation and local data storage laws. These conflicts have been more pronounced since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Telegram, 
which is widely used in Russia for both messaging and news, is led by Pavel Durov, who left Russia in 2014 and now holds citizenship in the United Arab Emirates and France. The exact reasons for the dropping of fines remain unclear, with some speculation that it could be due to the inability of Russian bailiffs to locate assets that could be forcibly seized. However, without official statements or clear evidence, the reasons behind this decision are still a matter of conjecture. And now, as we reach the end of our news segment, please remember, for a detailed list of our sources, you can find them in the description of our YouTube video. Thank you to everyone who watched today's program. Remember, by following us, you become part of a reliable source for information and advice. Whether you like the program or not, please press subscribe to join our community. This helps us improve and ensures you are among the first to receive our latest news and programs. Don't forget to hit the like button and share our channel with your friends. Farewell, until we meet again.